द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह असी हमेशा अपने व्यूज़ नो इस प्रोग्राम ते यू एस दी इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स दी नवी नवी गल्ला उनादे सामने लेके आंदे हैं उनानु उनानाल जालू करांदे हैं आज साड़ी खुश किस्मती है आज साड़ी कोल एक ऐसी शख्सियत स्टूडियो इच हाजिरन जिनादा इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स इच फॉरेन पॉलिसी इच इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस इच बड़ा गुड़ा एक्सपीरियंस है जो कि एक प्राइवेट एक्विटी फर्म दे मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर हैं जो इंटरनेशनल इन्वेस्टमेंट्स दा काम कर दें इस तो पहला वो जियोपॉलिटिक्स दे प्रोफेसर रह चुके दें आज असी स्वागत कर दें आ मंदीप सिंह मल्होत्रा जी दा मंदीप जी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर टेकिंग ऑफ द टाइम यू नो coming to the studios uh, sharing your knowledge with the viewers thoda bahut bahut swagat hai thank you thank you my pleasure to be here uh mandeep ji e sadi khush kismat hi hai ki sadi community vich uh, thode je bande hege aur jehde uh, ajj itthe sade kol aa ke sade views de naal duniya vich is liye ki chal reha hai us de us de naal sanu uh, kuch jankari deyange us bare vich main सब तो पहला थोड़े तो ये पूछना चाहगा कि यू नो असी ये देखते हैं कि जो ए रीसेंटली कोविड के नाल हो इन द लास्ट वन वन एंड हाफ ईयरस इट अपेयर्स के द वर्ल्ड हैज़ चेंज द होल वर्ल्ड हैज़ बीन अफेक्टेड और सानू इदा लगता है कि इट्स गोन लीव एन इम्पैक्ट फॉर सम टाइम तुम की वेखते हो आर दे गोइंग टू बी एनी यू नो लोंग लास्टिंग इफेक्ट्स ऑफ दिस सिचुएशन truly and factually yes the world has experienced something which most of the new generations did not expect mm -hmm. after the second world war mm -hmm. and a healthcare crisis was always taken for granted that that would not take place ever ji but historically if you look back at some people and some universities who had done the research looking at the way we were using resources mm -hmm. of the planet or the earth uh, MIT definitely had done a research in 1972 on the futuristic living and sustainable living on the world g and then they did see that by 2040 the way we were consuming our resources there would be an impact in the change of our living not knowing what it may be and mm -hmm. how it can affect us but i'm not saying that we were still prepared you know these are theoretical researches so this was way back in 1972 1972 and of course when you look at something in the future it's always an open book unknown yeah but it would happen something like this would happen 20 years before or 30 years before was also unpredictable mm -hmm. and what happened happened of course we have seen each and every country getting affected by it and we have also seen how can how much of a containment policies humans could put into place mm -hmm. failed i would not say it was a success in the beginning mm -hmm. because if we knew and if we were prepared uh this kind of loss of life would not have happened would be prevented could be prevented it's again a big question mark mm -hmm. but definitely we could see not just small loopholes or small holes in the healthcare policy of the world forget the developed or the developing world mm -hmm. uh it was on the side of pharmaceuticals it was on the side of socio cultural issues how people were asked to maintain social distancing mm -hmm. but i think so they were always over confident ki menu nahi hoega ji ji and that was not in one country or the second country mm -hmm. we saw one country after the other ji be it in europe be it in south america even today we see it in some countries in south america suffering but they still are not able to accept that it will happen to us we see it with india and we see it with australia who are so much of a country which 
take these conditions seriously, mm -hmm. they're still getting affected by it. Mm -hmm. And one interesting factor we all see is that virus and the vaccine is out, we're still waiting for the FDA approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our policies to politics to treatment are still not on the same page. G. So going forward, mm -hmm. we all are doing our best to contain it, but all the structures and the pillars that we have put in place, thinking we would be able to uh, contain such kind of a situation is not a realistic model mm -hmm. till today because we're still talking to the FB FDA G when is the approval coming. G -G -G -G. Uh, as you said, when the situation is coming, there are so many shortcomings at so many levels that have come, you know, come forward. I mean, developed countries who are who have been so proud and you know comfortable with their manufacturing capabilities you know if they care see the problem i and we did it ventilators we don't have that basic life saving machine us just us no depend karna paya and they were not available when they were needed does does a situation like that change the whole paradigm the way we have been developing in the past last 30 40 years we <clears throat> 30, 40 years, as you know, G. the developed world had stepped up and moved on from areas of vaccines because they had eradicated malaria, eradicated polio. Mm -hmm. Most of the vaccine taking issues and troubles were taken out of the system. Mm -hmm. They had very good eradication policies. And once they did that, there were other prolonged issues of health that came forward in the developed world. Mm -hmm. Because developed world has different diseases, as we can say, and longevity definitely took it forward. And the developing world has different kind of a healthcare system or a very lacking or poor healthcare system. Uh, so it was like a speed bump on a highway Mm -hmm. which is never there. Hmm. We always have stop signs on smaller lanes. We have red lights on smaller lanes, mm -hmm. but on highways, we don't see We them. don't have these speed bumps. So now that the whole system had gone onto the highway system, just to have a nice comparison, mm -hmm. uh, this was not a challenge or a thought hmm. to chase. Mm -hmm. And so the systems had completely redirected and as we said respirators were not uh, in use and in need when they were needed uh, because these are uh, things that are used mostly in ICUs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and again in healthcare and long-term care people but guys like you and me for example really don't need a ventilator or a respirator on a daily basis, mm -hmm. unless until we are completely G. in need. So the population and the healthcare system had moved on, and this is like going back 40 years, mm -hmm. and of course it's not easy as far as facility and infrastructure is to be needed. Yeah, you know, availability is something else, but the capability to manufacture that that I think a JD Pishle say Kai Salamichina the Jada structure just that you know as a service sector we jam the Koshish Korea economies, developed economies try to keep themselves in service sector, like they aim at more than sixty percent, right? Is that something they're gonna look at in a different way now? I'll tell you about the service sector. G. You mentioned sixty percent. Mm -hmm. We are already at ninety five percent. G. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Service. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing we started to export out after senior Bush, mm -hmm. and we sent it to all across the world to different countries. G. And everybody did their best to manufacture for us. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Mexico is a bordering partner. They are the big, like 14% trade with us. Mm -hmm. Canada comes next, and after that, it's all China. G. Other small countries, we can name them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're not such a trading partner that we are gonna miss them or they're gonna miss us. Mm -hmm. And when our healthcare manufacturing is in China and Canada, 
and those countries are also affected and trade has stopped mm -hmm. even if they were capabilities they are not going to work because of distancing the Canadians are not going to work because of distancing we are not going to work mm -hmm. because of this how do you produce mm. when you cannot produce you have a lag time mm -hmm. on the provisions a good example uh, was we bought and as you know, most of our pharmaceutical healthcare companies are in China manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But when the supplies are loaded on the plane, mm -hmm. because they were in China, on Chinese soil, coming to the US, the Chinese could get into the plane and say, we need it more than you do, and they would be off the plane. Gee. But that was one of a kind of an example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that one can see. Mm -hmm. and. In global trade, we had never seen that before. As you know, most of our manufactured goods in the US mm -hmm. come from around the world and the supply chain is beautifully settled mm -hmm. and it's covered well. But nobody had seen a broken supply chain where human issues, mm -hmm. human lives would be at task mm -hmm. or at risk. Mm -hmm. And this risk showed us how to mitigate the risk that would come forward because this could be the first or the last. Again, we do not know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, as we said in the beginning, it has changed the way, you know, uh, these, the way these uh, supply chains have developed. They'll have to do some rethinking, KJD supply chains, and if they get, you know, interrupted, what do we do? And China is a very key player in all this discussion. Asi China de bare thodi hor gal karange, ek choti ji break de baat. Tusi vekte ro, the way forward. The way forward is tola fir tu swagat hai, main tola host Harjot Singh. Aaj asi gal kar rahe hain foreign policy de expert Mandeep Singh Malhotra ji nal. Mandeep ji, Tusi bohot sari countries de, bohot sari uh, foreign policy de, institutions de, uh, you know, not associated ho, not board member ho. You know, and you understand this more, uh, better than anyone else. Pichle vi ik salam vich, jedi dunya di dependence ho hai China te. Manufacturing like a supply chains like a her cheese like a not just US, Europe, Australia, everywhere, right? Or a COVID the jetty situation, I you know, this might be a one in the only situation, a standalone situation. We don't know what's coming uh, in the future. Jira China the role, Halaki Hali, you know, people are investigating keep what was their role was it intentional laboratory and, and we don't have a comment on that i'm not sure if you would like to make a comment on that but would you not at this point not at this point because we don't know what's going on it's it's an investigation but each is the same sari dunya a realize kar di hai ki bhai e china te jehdi dependence hai kisi bhi country te there has to be something are these organizations, these institutions, these countries at a policy level, rethinking the whole, the whole setup, the whole situation? It goes back, let me retract from your question a little. G. It all starts with manufacturing getting expensive in the US. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in the early 90s, senior Bush, came up with the formula of NAFTA, mm -hmm. uh, North American Free Trade Agreement. Is a blame Clinton the Oh, is it? That I didn't know. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So it was Canada, US, Mexico. Mexico. G. So we sent our manufacturing very quickly to Mexico. Mexico. And that region that came up on the border of Texas and California were called the Maquiladoras. Mm -hmm. And Maquiladoras were the region where no US law, because it's in Mexico, would affect. So there were no environmental laws, no environmental policies, no wage policies, no labor concerns. And American manufacturing was very happy mm -hmm. uh, that they could hire people in Mexico for dollar a day or dollar an hour, I don't remember the numbers now, mm -hmm. and get the same product, G. 
manufactured. Ji. Put on a truck and bring it back across the border. Ji. You're happy. Yeah. And there are no labor laws. Yeah. And so it, it makes no, perfect sense being so close. Yeah. Ji. So that worked very well. Mm -hmm. Four years down, five years down, that area became a asset ground mm -hmm. because all the chemicals from the industries were let out in the open Gee. because they didn't need any cleanliness to be done because it was not in the US mm -hmm. and Mexico didn't have those laws mm -hmm. to the point that the labor that had moved out from the rural areas of the south of Mexico mm -hmm. were living on the border to the point that their nails in their feet nails in their hand started to decay in the chemicals that how bad the situation became Gee. And the trucks on which the materials were brought in the U.S. didn't have or did not have the U.S. Uh, transportation certifications or the state Texas, whatever inspections we have. So they would crash in Texas, they will fall apart in Texas. Mm -hmm. So they tried to revamp the system, but it became a headache for the U.S. government. And to take benefit of that, you know, Japan set up their units there mm -hmm. because it's Makilador, any company can set up with a certain equity given to the country. Gee. So all other countries did come up and set up there. But then US really got the pressure and they had to do something about it. So then a few companies which are under pressure for using what we call as, uh, and Nike is a big issue with that, uh, using child labor, mm -hmm. poor environmental laws. So they moved, some moved to Bahamas, some moved to Jamaica, and then they, they started to disintegrate. And of course, it went on for the whole decade. Mm -hmm. And then we could see some happenings in India and China. They were started to open up a little. And in the last year of Mr. Clinton's two year of presidency before moving out, he offered China the most favored nation status, MFN. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, China opened up to the world Gee. because only US got the preferential treatment from the Chinese, not mm. the EU. Okay. That became a competition. Gee. And US, EU was not happy. But Clinton, Mr. President Clinton could get it done. And US manufacturing landed up in China. China. And at that time, China's story came about at the same as India and Brazil, of emerging Brazil, emerging India, emerging China. Mm -hmm. And not much thought was given to China at the time. Gee. Till they did prove of themselves by bringing whatever they could sell was accepted by the world because quality was a big concern Gee. for Americans. Mm -hmm. But can you make it the way we want? Mm -hmm. But when people were buying it, so the question of quality really went out the door with the price because for that price, that quality seems to be pretty good. Mm. And that was the start, or we call the engine growth of China since mm -hmm. then till today. We see them only expanding their business. Mm -hmm. We can talk about, oh, this country don't, doesn't like them and their business policies are not good because, you know, there'll always be obstacles. Gee. But their export growth is only expanding. Yeah. So we really don't have much to add on to it because if those numbers are expanding, mm -hmm. these obstacles and obligations to they're not doing good and they're not doing this is really not a debate mm -hmm. because the numbers are the numbers. So, so did China beat India, Brazil, Mexico with their industrial infrastructure or what was it exactly that lured the world to China? I would think all the factors you brought to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, their efficiency in labor, mm -hmm. their cost to manufacture, mm -hmm. their business benefits, Gee. keeping delivery timelines. Mm. And I think so that's the most important piece. These are the cultural business. issues. It's, it's, they had it, they delivered it, and it's not a short term game that in 20 years, if they were not doing what they said they were doing, the world would move somewhere else. Gee. 
Indeed. Even countries that are not in line with them on political thought process or ideology, mm -hmm. but on business they like to be with them. Yeah. Because business is run by private companies. Gee. Governments could disagree, mm -hmm. but when you look at manufacturing, <coughs> companies, if they want something, they go to China. Gee, gee, gee. Yeah, you know, man, whenever we have spoken to any uh, businessmen who uh, you know, uh, do business with China, they, they always say that the government that has always come to their sport. immediately procure so uh, th there's a whole culture, a whole team, a whole machine, which has uh, which has been working, uh, which has you know brought uh, costs down for consumers all over the world, which has made things available. But will it be the same going forward? Again, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. Answer can be hypothetical or realistic. Uh, Personally, first question comes to mind, what choice do we have? G, G. When you don't have a choice, mm -hmm. and that's the best choice you got, mm. you take it. Yeah, but, you know, we, we have seen companies trying to go to uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Apple tried to go to India as well. But uh, you're right, they have not had that kind of success in those countries that they got from China. You can see the bigger companies, G. you know, they'll always be, I would like to see India compete. G. Mm -hmm. And they do compete in certain sectors. Mm -hmm. But manufacturing is not something uh, the base of India has been able to provide. G. G. They G. can provide engineers, mm -hmm. but not all engineers are standing on the assembly line. Mm. G. G. What G. Tesla wants to get done in China, what Apple wants to get done in China, what XYZ or Nike or Adidas, these are the big brand names we are talking because we all hear them on the street, G. so people can relate. G. But then of course we have the chip market, which of course, which are in deep marketing strategies, how to make the chips going forward, mm -hmm. how to work on the semiconductor industry mm -hmm. going forward. G. And these will be new policy changes but then, of course, it comes with a cost and an expense and a revenue model. Mm -hmm. And we have to see who bears the cost mm -hmm. and who pays for it. Mandeep ji, asi e gal jari rakhange, ek choti ji break de baad. Tusi vekhte ro, the way forward. The way forward is thought of it to swagata, main toda host harjot se. Mandeep ji, asi e gal ki ti ke kyun China ek manufacturing da hub bane hai, the world over, and I think is like a natural you know, result. Hai. China has grown in power. Was the international influence zada vada nazar aare hai? Or asi dekh rya ki politically, you know, uh, unade confrontations jadiyan uh, kuch developed countries and all, kuch developing countries and all, neighbors and all, samne aariyan. A JD confrontations and is is it? an attempt to contain China? W what do you think is the reason on India they now use the border? There are coffee issues which like a which some near in. What do you think is the reason for that? We are aware we are two large old civilizations next to each other, G. China and India. And respectfully, they both have equal amount of people in each country. G. And somewhat in the last few decades, we have seen China has, has had exponential growth. Gee. Uh, the world, any country, if you look at in the world, they depend on two powers, be an economic power and then military power. Gee. So <clears throat> they became an economic power. Mm -hmm. And now it's resulting into a military power. Mm -hmm. And we have seen its approach towards Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. We have seen it, how it's behaving towards Taiwan, mm -hmm. towards Japan, mm -hmm. towards Australia. Mm -hmm. And it's moving into the Sea of China, mm -hmm. coming towards the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It's expansion into Myanmar, mm -hmm. expansion into Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And attempts to expand into India as well. 
that's the land issue, which of course we have had since 1962. Mm -hmm. And they keep, it's more like the US-Mexico border when the river flows north. Mm. You know, it's, it's a flexible border. Gee. And half of US, some of US goes into the mm. Mexican side, but that's a moving piece, which I am sure both the sides and both the parties and the foreign policy and both the sides of the country will be able to resolve one day. It's been ages now. Gee. And we saw our few soldiers and their soldiers did get on the wrong side and they had affected but the expansion of China has already reached Sri Lanka Gee. with signing up a 99 year port lease mm -hmm. and they might expand into Maldives we do not know and on the other side they have expanded into Africa Pakistan on the other side Gee. Gee. With, with the model of giving them loans Gee. And we can see it very clearly when Pakistan does not object to how they treat the Muslims as in their own country in China, Gee. but they object to how they're treated by the Israelis in Palestine. And it shows the balance of power, how China has already contained and taken over of Pakistan and its policy. Gee. So India now being trying to get to the superpower status has to think logically on how to uh, manage China, be friendly with China, because it's difficult to have a diplomatic tussle mm -hmm. with billion people each. Gee. So let's see what comes into play. Mm -hmm. But uh, we hope for the best that they can both agree on something and grow on something, Gee. rather than res talk about the border issues for 60 years straight. Gee, 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 gee. Yeah, but, but we've seen some alliances coming, like we see this alliance between Japan, India, and Australia. Right. I is that particularly targeted at China? It very much is, because as you see during COVID, mm -hmm. Australia and China had a very good business relationship. Gee. And during the virus and the lockdowns, the relationship went south mm -hmm. because China was getting the blame. Gee. And India was also suspecting something. And Japan, Australia, and India have triangulated a strategy to import and export the resources that they have with each other because when China says, I'm not buying X, Y, Z from Australia, mm -hmm. for be it wine or be it a mineral, there has to be another buyer, otherwise Australian economy suffers. Gee. So they were looking at India and India very readily said yes. Mm -hmm. And we had Indians working on the policy side in Australia with the Australian government mm -hmm. who supported it and the Indian government did support Gee. Australia in a big way. and. Uh, it's, it's a diplomatic tussle, but we still all will have to get to China to see how to get the manufacturing base out if they need to balance something else. Mm -hmm. So alliances like these, is, is there a military angle to that as well? Or it's purely economic? It started with economic mm -hmm. because Australia is an island. Japan is an island. Gee. The first and foremost purpose is to supply resources to their own countrymen. Gee. And the only way is by ships and ports. Gee. And if China decides I'm putting five frigates on the way and I want to see who sells them, mm -hmm. it becomes an issue. Gee. So they have to be very diplomatic in maintaining a relationship and getting the resources to the people because as you know, Australia was completely dependent on China. Gee. And now they are learning that they have to now open other avenues to get resources in. Mm -hmm. And India being kind enough to support that is doing its job pretty well. Gee, gee, gee. Yeah. yeah. These are how, this is how dynamics change. I think China, it, it, has, you know, it has become more ambitious over uh, you know, a period of time with their, with their growth, with their development, I think. 
ਜਿਵੇਂ ਅਫਰੀਕਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਗਿਵਿੰਗ ਮਨੀ ਇਨ ਅਫਰੀਕਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਇਨਫਲੂਐਂਸ ਉੱਥੇ ਵੱਧਦੇ ਆ ਵੱਧ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਐਂਡ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਚੀਜ਼ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਊਥ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਸੀ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਾਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਕਾਫੀ ਪਲੇਅਰਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਬੜਾ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਏਰੀਆ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਾਮਰਸ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਔਰ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਬੇਬੀ ਐਜ਼ ਐਨ ਆਲਟਰਨੇਟ ਕਿ ਕਿਧਰੇ ਸਾਡੀ ਉਥੋਂ ਪਾਵਰ ਕੱਲ ਘਟ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਐਨ ਆਲਟਰ ਆਲਟਰਨੇਟ ਰਾਊਟ ਟੂ ਯੂਸ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਟੂ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਇਸ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਈ ਦੇ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਸਿਲਕ ਰਾਊਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵਿਚ ਗੋਸ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਨਟੂ ਯੂਰਪ ਸੀ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਬੇਸਿਕ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਨੇਚਰ ਵਿਚ ਵੀ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਨਾਟ ਡਿਨਾਈ ਬੀ ਇਟ ਐਨੀ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਔਰ ਅਸ ਜੀ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਵਾਂਸ ਯੂ ਬਿਕਮ ਵੈਲਦੀ ਇਨਫ ਜੀ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੱਡਾ ਕਰ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਹੋਰ ਰਾਜਨ ਦੂਜਾ ਘਰ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਜੀ ਫਿਰ ਵਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਘਰ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਫਿਰ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਹੋਮ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਸਿਮਿਲਰਲੀ ਇਟ ਹੈਪਨਸ ਇਨ ਜੀਓਪੋਲਿਟਿਕਸ ਜੀ ਵਾਂਸ ਯੂ ਅਟੇਨ ਸਰਟਨ ਪਾਵਰਸ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਵੇਖੀ ਦਾ ਕਿ ਯਾਰ ਵਾਟ ਨੀਡਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਡਨ ਹੂੰ ਨਾਲ ਵਾਲੀ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਦੀ ਲੈ ਲਓ ਜੀ ਮੰਗੋਲੀਆ ਵੀ ਲੈ ਲਓ ਤਾਈਵਾਨ ਹਾਂਗਕਾਂਗ tibet was the first one to go if you remember dalai lama had to move in 1958 ji so it's not something new or recent that we see on china's affairs ji we are now paying more attention to it because from india's perspective us is paying more attention to it hmm. because india had seen it in 1958 tibet went overnight ji there was nothing to be done mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then mongolia went it didn't affect us because mongolia was in the north hmm. because mongolia is more or less run by china china so they have always pursued this path mm-hmm. but as long as it was not affecting the bigger nations it was fine ji ji but when one country grows as you have seen in the past colonial england mm-hmm. they were happy with themselves but when they went out to trade and they thought you know what why trade when we can colonize we can have both sides of the pie ji mm-hmm. and we have seen it they brought in tea from india they mm-hmm. taxed the people in india mm-hmm. they sold it in boston they taxed the people here mm-hmm. so these type of colonial expansions and having a desire to grow ji. has always been there with one country or the other with the difference of the time frame when they were economically strong ji. ਅਸੀਂ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਗਰੋਥ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਇਹ ਯੂ نو ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਪਲੋਮੈਟਿਕ ਸਟਰੈਂਥਸ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਐਕਸਪੈਂਡਿੰਗ देयर ਆਰਮਸ ਆਲ ਓਵਰ ਦ ਵਰਲਡ ਉਹ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਇਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੋਰ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਮਨਦੀਪ ਜੀ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੇਖਦੇ ਰਹੋ ਦ ਵੇ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਦ ਵੇ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਇਸ ਔਰ ਫਿਰ ਤੋਂ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਹੋਸਟ ਹਰਜੋਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਨਦੀਪ ਜੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਕਿ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਜਦ you know country is powerful hundi and it's human nature like uh, anyone else uh, ovi apna uh, zyada growth de avenues dekhti hai and zyada uh, par apni extend kar di hai and exert kar di hai ki dekhde ho tusi for geopolitics for global uh, politics in this situation particularly vis-a-vis you know from what's coming out of china vis-a-vis india canada eu you know, the whole world in this the way we stand in the world today it's it's a world at a turning point g which was least expected mm-hmm. because we were all going in the same flow same imports same exports migration policies were all running in good symmetry mm-hmm. and of course we had the few financial crises but they were managed well mm. we came out well but in today's world as we see if there is no replacement to china ji then everybody has to live with it ji unless until you have an alternate mm. because we cannot say this is the 10 things they are not doing but then all the business is in china ji because their global trade expansions and their surplus is only going as surplus mm. mm-hmm. it's not that any country has said i'm not doing work or business with you but the surplus shows they are working with them ji uh we have seen technology issues they had with canada they had with us we had cyber security issues and being looking at india we had had manufacturing 
still coming from China. It's not that it's been replaced. Ji. They still have a surplus. Mm -hmm. And whatever the governments are doing or the capitals are talking to each other, business is flourishing. For China? For China. Ji. So as long as the business is flourishing for China, they are in the driver's seat. Ji. And it's not completely based on exports. Now they're within, the domestic markets have really emerged as well. Right? They're trying. Ji. Because as we all know, majority of most of these countries are rural, mm -hmm. agriculture dependent. Ji. But we don't hear much about that because they are very much a country that speaks on the shorelines and the coasts. Ji. Like us, we have California and we have New York and now we have developed Texas. Mm -hmm. But the main hinterland inside doesn't speak much. Ji. As far as the EU is concerned, mm -hmm. we saw Brexit. And now we have Germany leading charge Ji. of Europe. Mm -hmm. And we do not know how they will play out, to tell you the truth. Mm. Because France has a very different level of growth mm -hmm. as compared to Germany. Ji. And the rest of the other European countries are more of a consumer today than producer and exporting. Ji. So it's not on the side of, I would say, strong growth, mm -hmm. but it's become a good consumer mm -hmm. of other global capital coming in. Mm -hmm. Ji, we, we have the priv privilege of having you uh, here today. You know, we don't understand our own foreign policy, the foreign policy of this country. Where, whereas we started uh, with that Washington's uh, isolationist, you know, being an isolationist country, and we had uh, presidents like Quincy Adams who said we don't look, go looking for uh, you know, uh, demons all over the world. We were not exporting our democracy. And then there came a time when we were doing that, right? Now we saw some changes uh, you know, uh, under Trump. All said and done, it, it's, it, it appeared that he was trying to change the course of the policy. I don't know where we stand today. There's one segment of uh, Democrats who complain about uh, our uh, country going into foreign countries and influencing uh, their politics. And on the same token, they're complaining about lo losing that leadership position in the world. So we don't understand what's, what's going on. You know, we had just one president who had a very different policy. You Ji. mentioned his name. Ji. Otherwise, U.S. foreign policy uh, has followed the same course since the Second World War, because that's when they called the global leadership. Mm -hmm. We really became the leaders. Ji. And since then, we never had a competitor. We claimed Russia was a competitor, but that was just an ideological basis. Ji. Business was always with American corporations expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. Isolationism was very old when they wanted to just close down and grow their own economy and then open up. Gee. But after the Second World War, we had a blue water strategy, mm -hmm. which we just took over straight out of England Gee. via Canada. Mm -hmm. because that strategy was taught in England. They followed it, then it went to Canada. Ji. They tried to follow it on theory, though, mm -hmm. and then we brought it here in the U.S., that if you control the oceans, mm. you really expand. And we did very well with that. Most of America's leadership comes from Washington, D.C., and other affiliate organizations that we have with like the UN. And they try to do whatever they can in certain countries, mm -hmm. be it a ethnic problem, religious problem. They try to say their two words. We saw it fail as well. G. In Rwanda, Tutti situation, we saw it not do well in the breakup of Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. but we saw it well with the breakup of Russia Mm -hmm. And it was just how the world plays out to our policies. And 
We are global leaders, but we should also not expect the world to listen to us all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen because sometimes they are more attuned to the old colonial power, be it England or France or Gee. the Dutch. And being a very recent nation, like 300 years old, mm -hmm. and complete migration of a new population coming in, Gee. and we are 300, 350 million plus in almost 300 years. Mm. India is a billion for the last 3,000 years. So the, girl, the way we are growing is faster, I think, of so any civilization has ever done or as a country. Gee. So we are doing pretty okay, if you ask me, if we go do a comparative mm -hmm. analysis with other countries. Mm -hmm. And the kind of superpower we have, the arms and ammunition, the economic power, mm -hmm. and uh, I think so we are in a very good stage and little bit ups and downs do continue. GG, no, I, I don't think there's anyone that, who can deny that. <laughs> uh, you know, Canada which sadi bahut community basdi hai and una de naal ek bada close relation hai ga i think canada is a country that has done a lot for uh, particularly sikhs True. more than any any other country maybe the ki ki tri kana chao ga relationship are canada and sikhs it seems like they are synonymous they just have worked very hard mm -hmm. uh, i think so they have been given good treatments by the laws ji and the Sikhs have given back by hard work mm -hmm. and the growth of the country. Mm -hmm. And we see it once we travel into Canada that they have a say, mm -hmm. a political say, G. economic say, G. and they have been giving to that country mm -hmm. whatever they can and Canada is not step, stepping backwards and denying anything. Gee. They also try to give back as much as they can. Mm -hmm. And I see it with their healthcare aid and healthcare support to some of the areas in rural Punjab. Gee. Uh, as you know, India's healthcare system run by the government is just 4%. Mm -hmm. Rest is all funded by private sector and money coming from abroad for the eyes, for this, and you see, so much charity happening in India, mm -hmm. and the Dutch, has, uh, the Dutch and the Canadians are always in lead. The governments or the governments, the governments, and the okay. people too, okay. because they are very small countries. Gee. So the government and the people are very much very close and in tune with each other. Mm -hmm. Canadians are 35 million people. Gee. We are Gee. 300. Mandeep Ji, sir, dekho, bhoota time hi reh gaya. Main jaante jaante ek chiz toh dekho, us rule puchna chaanga. Jadi apna unhe gal kiti hai, you know, uh, Sikhs being in Canada. This is this is something we we're, we're looking at, you know, global migration or bhoot saare numbers which, Loki, you know, the Western world which, US which, Canada which, Australia which, New Zealand which, not just from India, from all over the world, we see huge migrations. Does this affect geopolitics in a way? Would it in the future affect? Uh, the policies of those countries towards other countries within themselves, do, does it make a difference? It always do make a difference. It's just the migration that makes a difference. And we have See. seen it, uh, taking a good example of this country, hmm. uh, we had seen waves of population from different countries of Europe coming in. Gee. The Germans came in, mm -hmm. the Italians came, mm -hmm. the Belgians came, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Irish Amish came, came yeah. the Irish came, mm -hmm. and they all are living in different pockets of America today. Gee. The Germans are in Texas, the Poles are in Illinois, Irish and Italians are on the East Coast, and now they are migrating somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody comes from South America, they are more in Texas and California and Florida, the Cubans are in Florida, mm -hmm. and when they settle in certain areas, they become word banks or word pockets, Gee. and they vote for their betterment and for their interests. Mm. And the last who came was uh, uh, the Israelis, or I would call by the name the Jewish population. G. And they came and stayed, and they became a World Bank here in Brooklyn and Queens, and they continued in the Long Island as well. And they do dominate the policies of the US government towards Israel. Mm. And they have a say. G. And what we're looking at now is how when people come from South Asia or India, when they migrate here, 
how are they going to balance out and how they're going to live in certain towns and be vote banks we already see our vice president G, 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 G. and how we can take it forward mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it becomes economic power which we already have seen we should not use the word I should not use the word power but economically Indians have done well for themselves coming from an educated class G. Uh, they are the richest minority group now mm -hmm. and should they also benefit from the political balance that they can have certain policies built towards benefiting India mm -hmm. because that happens that happens and Indians have wherever they've gone I've seen different countries of the world they have shared very well where they have lived Gee. be it Canada their growth Australia and New Zealand they have gone and made a name for themselves so beat England you mm -hmm. know they are in the finance minister another minister mm -hmm. they did move up the Gee. ladder Gee. to serve the country mm -hmm. and if you migrate and the best thing one can do is to provide service to the country where you went in Gee. and add value to it of course then they say we need more people from there and we can add more value to it Gee. 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 Uh, Mandeep ji sade nal aj gal karan da tola bahut bahut shukriya it has been such an enlightening uh, session for us assi ummeed karange ki tusi dobara edda hi time kat ke sade kol aao there are very important issues individual issues jisde ch assi tode tode wisdom tode je experience hai us tu sikhna chahange aj sade nal gal karan da bahut bahut shukriya thank you thank you for your time ac sada aj da show to see Victor the way forward.